This video is going to show you how to properly set up a TIG welder to TIG weld steel, not aluminum steel. Um, we're going to assume that all of your TIG welders have a foot pedal at this point. Uh, scratch starters kind of thing in the past. You can do that if you, uh, that's all you have, but most people actually have a foot pedal, which is actually one of the major adjustments that you have to put on a machine if you're going to TIG weld. It always goes to remote for, from local or uh, a panel. I couldn't think of it for a second there. But uh, what we're going to do in this video, and you see, so you think you know how to set up your TIG welder. We're going to do a little quiz video here. At the end, we're going to have a quiz, and we're going to kind of quiz you throughout the video on things, see if you actually know how to set up a TIG welder. If you can run a TIG welder, that's great. If you put down um, the greatest speeds in the world, that's great. But if you don't know how to set it up, that's bad. Scale of 1 to 10, 1 not being a big deal, 10 being a big deal, you're, you're all left here to a 10. You got to know how to set up a TIG welder. You may think you know, but you may know how to do only one machine. We're going to do three machines. I, uh, did I write that down? Yeah, three machines. So um, two of them are digital, pretty easy to set it up. The last one is an ESOB that I dug out of the back room that has a lot of toggles and, and knobs, uh, which I kind of like because, you know, I can switch a toggle out really easy if it breaks, right? With, you know, um, digital ones, you got to get a new board, and they cost a lot of money, right? So we've got three machines. We're going to set up all three, and we're going to scramble them a little bit and ask you true or false. Which I got right here. Is this set up correctly? And then you can answer it in your mind or whatever, and then I'll give you the answer and tell you what's wrong with it if it is a false. Once I do a false, we're going to diagnose what's wrong with it. What do we need to switch so that you can actually know, with these three machines at least, how to do this stuff. And then last but not least, we'll come in and I'm going to do a final quiz. I don't know how many questions it'll be, but we'll do a multiple choice uh, final quiz. And I'm going to ask you all the stuff that we just saw in the lab. Uh, what you should be using for TIG welding. So hopefully that makes uh, sense. So we'll get into it here. The first thing we're going to do is go out in the lab and look at these three machines. All right, this is our first machine. This is the Precision TIG 275 made by Lincoln Electric. So the first question that we have is true or false. This machine is set up correctly to run steel TIG welding. The correct answer is false because it is on the wrong polarity. So to remedy this, we're going to switch from direct current electrode positive to direct current electrode negative. It is now ready to take weld steel. We'll head over to our next welder. We are now over here on a Miller Synchrowave here, 250DX. That's going to be our second welder that we look at to make sure you know how to set up a TIG welder. True or false, this is correctly set up to TIG weld steel. The answer is false. This should be on remote, and this should be on high frequency start to correctly weld steel with TIG weld. On to the next welder. This is one of the older welders that I pulled out and you can see it's got a lot of um, dials and just toggle switches rather than electronic readouts. So we're looking at this, it's an ESOP Helioark 252 to see if it is correctly set up to TIG weld steel. True or false, it's correctly set up to weld steel. It's false. This right here is down on this TIG insignia, which may make you think that it's good for TIG welding steel, but it needs to be on a remote, just like the last one. That goes to your foot pedal. If you were scratch starting um, TIG welding, that would be okay. But you want it on a remote if you have a foot pedal. Now we're back to our leaky precision TIG. True or false, this is set up correctly to TIG weld steel. Again, it's false. Just like the last one, it's up on this TIG insignia here. It should be down here with the foot pedal. That goes to the rheostat so that you can control the amperage with a foot pedal. We're back to the Miller. True or false, this is correctly set up to TIG weld steel. Again, it's false. This is a pretty obvious one. It's on stick, right? You want to push this to get down to TIG. And you saw the high frequency start bounce back down there. These digital ones are a lot easier. But again, you got to be on TIG. 
We're back to our ESOB. True or false, this is correctly set up with TIG weld steel. It is false, right? It's on this contactor up here where the stick insignia is, so we're gonna go back down to remote. Just like on the Miller. On stick, should be on remote. Which means you're using a foot pedal to TIG weld. If you were scratch starting to be on that bottom one. All right, we're back to the Lincoln. True or false, this is correctly set up to TIG weld steel. The answer is false. Again, it's up on this stick insignia instead of this TIG. Push that down, and you're good to go. Back to the Miller. True or false, this is correctly set up to TIG weld steel. False again, right? It's on panel, that's for stick welding. You want it on remote, which takes, takes it to your foot pedal. That's for a scratch start. Back to the ESOB, true or false, this is correctly set up to TIG weld steel. The answer is false, there's two things wrong with this. It's up on panel here again, you want to be down on a remote. Panel is for stick welding, for scratch start. And then over here you want to be on high frequency start. On off, continuous is for TIG welding, aluminum. Back to our Lincoln. True or false, this welder is correctly set up to TIG weld steel. It's true. It's on direct current electrode negative. It's on the TIG insignia here. It's on the foot pedal, so it goes to remote, which is going to allow you to push a pedal down to increase or decrease your amperage. So you are 100% set up correctly to TIG weld steel. True or false, this Miller is correctly set up to TIG weld steel? The answer is true. You're on direct current electrode negative, you're on the TIG process, you're on the remote, which goes to the foot pedal, you're on the remote again, which goes to the foot pedal, you're on high frequency start, you are 100% correct. Your machine is ready to go and weld steel with the TIG process. True or false, this ESOB is ready to correctly weld steel. False, to be for a curve there, yeah. I moved this over to AC. This is not what you weld steel with, it's what you weld aluminum with. So we're gonna switch this back to direct current electrode, negative or straight polarity. And now you are 100% correct in machine setup for this ESOB. It's on remote here, it's on remote here, high frequency start, and you're on direct current electronegative. So you're all set. One more thing before we go back into the uh, room there is uh, I do have another machine that's older that has this on it right here. Local or remote. That's a common thing that's on welding machines. Local. It's for scratch starting to stick welder. Remote again goes to your foot pedal. If you're TIG welding, you go to remote, not local. Local is for stick. So anytime you see local, that's for stick welding. Again, though, it all comes down to when there's a remote, that's for TIG welding. Right, we're going to do a quick little recap here where we just did the lab before we take the final quiz here. Uh, when you're going to switch a machine to TIG or gas junction arc welding here, you're always going to switch to some kind of TIG symbol or it might even say TIG. Uh, you, you don't want to be on the stick one for obvious reasons. You want to be on TIG. You're always going to go to the remote because that goes to your foot pedal. It takes the power to your foot pedal. Uh, most welding machines have a foot pedal scratch starts kind of a thing in, in the past, right? Uh, you're going to have a high frequency start um, button on there. You're going to go to high frequency start. If it's continuous high frequency, that's for aluminum. So you want to be on high frequency start. And the first thing that you really want to look at is direct current electronegative. I don't know why I put it at the bottom. But direct current electronegative is what's going to make sure that your tungsten doesn't get burned up. If you go over here to direct current electropositive where you would stick well, it's going to suck up into your tungsten electricity and it's going to melt your tungsten. So these are the things over here with stick welding or shield metal arc welding that you want to avoid. 
the stick symbol. You don't want to put on the stick symbol because you're TIG welding, right? Panel and local are kind of the same thing. That means you're scratch starting it um, with the electrode. You can do the same thing with TIG, but again, that's kind of a thing in the past. They all have a rheostats now, foot pedal, some of them are on the actual TIG torch, depending on what your setup is. Usually it's a foot pedal. So panel and local mean you're going to scratch start uh, a stick welder. And last but not least, direct current electrode positive. We already hit that. Um, that's going to send the, electric the direction of electricity up into the, the rod. Well, if you do that with a TIG, it's going to go up into the tungsten and eradicate your tungsten. So what we're going to do now is take a look at your final quiz here. All right, this is going to be a little quiz, a gas tungsten arc welding setup quiz that we're going to give you on the three welders that we were just looking at out in the lab, see if you can actually remember it. I'll see how good and see if you actually know how to set up a TIG welder. What polarity should a gas tungsten arc welder be set to if welding steel? Direct current electrode positive, direct current electrode negative, alternating current, or it doesn't matter the polarity. We'll give you a summary of all the uh, answers here at the end too. Question one is B, direct current electrode negative. That's the first thing you should look for on a welder when you're setting it up. When setting up a machine to run gas tungsten arc welding, should the machine be switched to the stick symbol or the TIG symbol? We're not going to waste a lot of time here. If you're going to TIG, you need to be on the TIG symbol, right? It is on most machines, so I threw it in there. I knew it was an easy question, but yes, it's going to be TIG, not stick if you're, if you're TIG welding. You should switch to remote if you're welding using what process? Gas tungsten arc welding, shielded metal arc welding, gas metal arc welding, flux core arc welding, or sub arc welding. Gas tungsten arc welding. The remote puts the power to your foot pedal. Anytime you see your remote when you're switching to TIG, put it on remote. Unless you're scratch starting. That's a different ball game though. You should switch to the panel symbol if you're welding using what process? Gas tungsten arc welding, shielded metal arc welding, gas metal arc welding, flux core arc welding, or submerged arc welding. Panel is for stick welding. Panel, it will either be panel or remote. You just chose remote on the previous slide. So panel means stick welding. So you want to be on remote. You should switch to high frequency start if you're welding using what process? Gas tungsten arc welding or steel or stainless. Uh, gas tungsten arc welding of aluminum. Shielded metal arc welding of steel or stainless or shielded metal arc welding of aluminum. Gas, tungsten, arc welding, steel, and stainless, you want to be on high frequency start. You should switch to the local symbol if you're welding using what process? We only had one welder out there, it was the fourth one actually, that wasn't even plugged in. But if you're switching to local, what process are you using? Gas, tungsten, arc welding, shielded metal arc welding, gas metal arc welding, flux core arc welding, or sub arc? Again, local or remote. You want to be on remote if you're TIG welding. Local means you're striking an arc, you're scratch starting. So you want to be on remote if you're TIG welding. Local means shielded metal arc welding or stick welding. You should switch to high frequency continuous if you're welding using what process? Uh, TIG with steel and stainless again, TIG with aluminum, stick with steel and stainless, or stick with aluminum threw this on here because I figured you're going to see that continuous button. What are you doing with that, right? You're TIG welding aluminum. So if you're doing steel, you would use high frequency start, not continuous. Continuous is for aluminum. If you push your foot pedal down and your tungsten instantly gets too hot and burns up, what is set wrong? I threw these last couple questions on here just as kind of a troubleshooting guide. So if it instantly gets too hot and burns up, what's wrong? You're on direct current electrode positive. When you're TIG welding, you're on direct current electrode negative. Positive is for stick welding. If you're on positive, the electricity is going to go up into your rod and burn it. With TIG, it'll melt your TIG torch. You push your foot pedal down and tungsten begins to burn up and looks contaminated. What's wrong? Direct, you're on direct current electrode negative, you have no ground, your gas is off, you're on remote. This is a real common thing. Your gas is off, right? 
If you put, push the foot pedal down and it instantly gets contaminated, your gas is off. Very common. And just through an extra credit, I hear what kind of gas is most commonly used in gas tanks and arc welding. And by most commonly, it's just about all the time. 75-25, that's for MIG welding. 100% argon is what you're using for TIG. Trimix is for stainless oxygen, is for cutting and acetylene, you're going to explode. There we go. I'll show you a little up on the computer. On the 10 questions, I'll show you what the answers were, the answer key, if you will, and we'll get out of here. All right, last but not least, this is the answer key. We had 10 questions on there. I didn't know if you wanted to write them down, but if you want to go back and redo them, uh, this is the answer key. I'm not going to read them. You can see them, right? So that's all we got for today. If you like uh, this quiz video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up and tell us you like it. Uh, it's a nice little video to uh, check and make sure you actually know how to set up a TIG welder. So that's all we got for today. Thanks for watching and subscribing to TV Weld, and we'll see you next time.